Well, hi guys, this is Dr. Bailey. I'm a practicing orthodontist as well as the co-founder of TrayMinder. TrayMinder is an app that I created to help my patients to remember to wear and change their aligners. You can also take teeth selfies to help document your smile transformation journey. In today's video, I'm going to answer the question about bite correction. What happens to your teeth? Does wearing rubber bands move your jaws or does it move your teeth? And what happens when you're done with orthodontic treatment and you stop wearing rubber bands? Will your bite get bad again? Will it go back to how it was before? So if you are interested in the answer to these questions, stick around and I'll do my best to answer each one in detail. So if you are unfamiliar with what rubber bands are for fixing bite, I have a very detailed uh, video on rubber bands 101. I'll link it below in the description box. But a lot of my patients have to wear rubber bands in order to get their bite to come together properly. When you pursue orthodontic treatment, you are most likely pursuing it for aesthetic reasons. You know, you want your teeth to be straight and you want to have a nice smile. Of course, your orthodontist wants the same thing, but they are also thinking about your bite. What is your bite anyway? The bite is basically a relationship of how your top teeth and how your bottom teeth come together. Having an ideal bite is beneficial for many reasons. One is that teeth are meant to come together properly in a certain way so that you uh, preserve the enamel. If your teeth do not come together properly and you grind your teeth, for instance, you are going to exacerbate the grinding and wearing down process of your enamel. And once your enamel is ground down, enamel doesn't grow back. So that's one real important reason on why we want to fix, let's say, a class two bite uh, where the peaks of the top teeth and the peaks of the bottom teeth, they, they are, uh, right on top of each other and when you grind your teeth the peaks they gradually wear down and an ideal bite you know the peaks and valleys come together like this like gears so that not only is it more stable for your bite but when you do grind you have less wear and tear so that's why your orthodontist is so preoccupied with having a good bite Having a good bite also can maintain a healthier TMJ because let's say that you have an edge to edge bite where your lower teeth, they sit right on top of your top teeth. That makes it so that your back teeth, your molars, they don't come together and your front teeth aren't meant to have the burden of having all of the forces uh, on them and so that can put extra pressure on your TMJ and it can cause discomfort over the long term. So that's why your orthodontist cares about your bite and wants to make sure that your teeth uh, come together properly. Now how do we actually get your bite and how does rubber bands help? Well rubber bands they put pressure on your teeth and that pressure, just like braces or clear aligners, will help to push your teeth or pull your teeth in one direction or another direction. So very commonly, a lot of patients have what's called a class two bite. It means that their top teeth are too far forward in relationship to their bottom teeth. So typically, if you have a class two, bite then you would be wearing rubber bands from your top canines to your lower molars and so by having it in that relationship you're basically pulling you're stretching the rubber band and the rubber band is going to be pulling the top canines back and it's going to be pulling the bottom molars forward so that they gradually come toward each other to decrease that discrepancy or to decrease that excess over jet. Now, does wearing rubber bands actually move your jaw? So let's say you're wearing a class two rubber band. Are you actually gonna be growing your jaw forward? No, it, it that's not how it works. 
you have your teeth are embedded within the bone and so by wearing rubber bands let's say on the lower all of your teeth from the molar back will be shifted forward slightly within that bone now keep in mind that there is only so much bone that you have you can't move your teeth outside of the bone of support right so there is a limit to how much bite correction you can achieve now sometimes you can cheat that and get more bite correction by extraction so let's say you want to move your front teeth because your front teeth are sticking out too much sometimes we would do a camouflage orthodontics which basically means that we are taking out teeth to camouflage a jaw discrepancy to camouflage in too big of an upper jaw and too small of a lower jaw by taking out maybe the first premolars that's a common those are common teeth to take out so that there's room there's more room and within the jaws or within the bone to move your your teeth backwards okay so with rubber band wear keep in mind that it's shifting the teeth within the bone but you're not actually moving the bone sometimes people they shift their lower jaws forward when they're wearing class 2 elastics that's kind of called a sunday bite where patients move their jaws forward to hide the fact that they have too much of an excess over jet but remember that that is not permanent you're actually you're using your muscles to hold your lower jaw forward it's not permanent you know when you go to sleep at night and your muscles relax your jaw your lower jaw will fall back due to gravity and uh, due to a lack of musculature activation so now, how about what happens when you're done with orthodontic treatment? Let's say you started with a class two bite and you wore your rubber bands, you had braces or you had clear liners and you're done with treatment. Does the, does the bite bounce back? Well, usually if you wear your retainers, you're maintaining your teeth into that new position. So ideally in most cases, that bite is maintained, okay? Um, the only times that I see that the bite can change, there are a couple of scenarios. One is uh, that there is growth. So that's pretty common in class three cases where uh, a teenager is done with treatment at age 15 and they still had some growth left, their lower jaw grows forward, and so now they went from a class one to a class three bite. Sometimes there is a relapse of class two cases um, that could be due to uh, some resorption of the TMJ. That's more common in females. Sometimes uh, there's a slight hidden Sunday bite that was not um, fully acknowledged so hopefully that answers your questions about what elastics do whether they move your teeth or your jaws they don't move your jaws they move your teeth and whether your bite is could be maintained via retainers well i hope that you have found this video to be helpful if you like it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel it really helps the channel out and this is dr bailey i'll see you next time Bye.